All right, so let's talk about orbital diagrams. Orbital diagrams are a pictorial description of electrons in an atom. In order to, make the, to figure out where electrons go in an atom, we have to follow three um, main rules. The first one being the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle states that each electron occupies the lowest energy orbital available. So then we have to think, okay, with the sublevels, um, I mean, the orbitals, how, how are they falling in terms of like energy? Which one's lower in energy? Which one's higher in energy? So let's look at the Aufbau diagram, which actually shows it for us. Okay, so down here, we have the 1s orbital. Well, the 1 dash indicates that there's one orbital within the 1s sublevel, which makes sense that it's the lowest in energy. It's the first, first principal energy level. You jump up a little bit in energy, and we get that 1s, sorry, the 2s orbital. Then we get the 2p sublevel. Notice that there's three orbitals within the 2p sublevel. We had learned that before. That makes sense. Okay, as we go up, and we jump up to the 3s orbital, then the 3p orbitals. Then up here, it gets all funny. Like all the thing, all the sublevels and all the orbitals kind of get jumbly in terms of like what you predict. So how are we going to remember which one is going to, which one's lower in energy than the others? And instead of having to carry this around and have to refer back to this actual diagram, there's an easy way to remember which way, um, how electrons fall in, in the orbitals and in the sublevels. All right, we're going to make this chart, which you might, see, which might seem familiar from the classroom. Um, the lowest, the first energy level is the 1s orbital. Then we're going to go, the, sorry, then we're going to do the 2s and the 2p, then the 3s, 3p, 3d, okay, and the 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to draw the entire thing, but you get how it works, how it comes out. Then we're going to say, okay, um, electrons are going to fall into the, the 1s orbital first, the lowest in energy, as the Aufbau, as the Aufbau diagram described. Okay falling into the 1s orbital. Then they're going to fall into the 2s orbital after that. OK, great. Then they're going to fall into the 2p orbital and then the 3s orbital, making our diagonals. Then they're going to fall into the 3p orbital and then the 4s orbital. Notice we skipped the 3d. They did not go across like that. We're following the actual um, um, arrows, not across. Then they're going to, after the 4s, then they're going to fall into the 3d and then the 4p and just keep pushing the arrows down if you have more uh, principal energy levels, so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll actually put this into play in just a second. Um, the second rule that we're going to talk about is the Pauli exclusion principle, which basically states that there are maximum two electrons per orbital. So an orbital can only hold two electrons, and that's it, no more. It can hold one, but it cannot hold more than two. Lastly, the Huns rule states that must <clears throat> states that um, they must occupy all orbitals of equal energy before pairing up. So just like um, electrons are both negative, they're all negatively charged, they're not going to want to be really close to each other. So if they're an equal in energy, they're going to occupy all the energy levels of that same energy first before they pair up, because they typically don't like being really close to each other. So let's put all this stuff into play. How does this all come together? OK, let's, use, let's do the orbital diagram for iron. Iron, we know, is on its ground state has 26 electrons. So we know the first electrons are going to go into the 1s orbital. And we said two, or two electrons can fall into the 1s orbital. After the 1s orbital is the 2s. Two electrons are going to go in there as well. And then you have the 2p. And don't forget, the p orbitals have three, uh, sorry, the p, two, the p sublevel has three orbitals. So we're going to draw three dashes, indicating the 3p three, three, the three sublevel. And their electrons are going to go in all of them first before pairing up. So right now we have a total of 10 electrons. This is the 2p sublevel. After the 2p sublevel, we're going to go into the 3s. Two electrons are going to fall into there. It's making 12. After 3s, we're going to go into the 3p. We're going to draw three dashes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons. After the 3p, we're going to go into the 4s. No, we're not going to go into the 3d. We go right into the 4s, which is 1. We have two electrons there. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. We have six electrons left. The next one is D. D has 10, um, sorry, five, my, I'm, I'm sorry about that, five um, orbitals, all the same energy. So we're going to draw five dashes. 2, 3, 4, 5. All are the 3D. So we're going to draw, I need six more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this is how you draw orbital diagrams. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs>
That should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>